but also we have 250 years uh, of experience on our property side of our property. He stood outside and he's got the check, £500,000. It's just about to hit your bank. Everything is easy. That this game is easy. You know, we're going to wake up and, and be property millionaires by tomorrow. What other ways are there to make money in property? Recording in progress. It goes. Yeah. Right. Well, again, we I can edit the hell out of this if, if we like mess up or if I, we say some shit we, we don't want to say. Um, yeah, sorted. So, and everything's allowed. So, cool. <laughs> Let's get going. So this is this is episode one of the real deal. Um, just just came up with the name, so we're working with it. And also, I bought a desk, and it's too small. So now I've got the mic in between my legs. So very <laughs> professional setup we've got here. But the the, the main man, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Mister Tom Edmonds, is our first guest. Um, so I think. It just I'll, I'll hand it over to you to like do an introduction, just like a little bit about yourself, who you are and stuff like that. Um, and then we can take it from there. Does that sound all right? It sounds brilliant. Thank you very much, Alec. This is a, a brilliant thing you've set up here. Um, it's uh, sure to take the internet by storm. So oh, are... absolutely. All good. Yes. Yeah, so uh, like you say, my name is Tom Edmonds. Um, I'm currently working for a company called Crowd Property. Um, I've been at Crowd for four years, uh, which is all about senior debt lending and property development finance. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just basically my life in property. Um, yeah. I mean, get into Crowd, um, into where I am now. So no, it's, uh, it's good to be a part of this uh, podcast. Cool, cool. So what's your job title at Crowd Property then? What, what do you actually do? Oh, good question. <laughs> I explain this quite often to uh, a lot of people I speak to. It's, uh, so I'm classed as a senior property manager, uh, which basically in layman's terms is first point of call for all project okay. inquiries and basically managing um, relationships within the business uh, and guiding okay. people in the process of raising funds. Yeah, I thought about this earlier. And is there any relation to Noel Edmonds? Because... You be, you essentially tell people whether it's a deal or not a deal. That's what you've done for me many it, times. Ex exactly, exactly. Uh, that used to be a chat up line in the past. I'm not going to lie. Uh, get get people on the uh, the TV program, but yeah, no relation. Spout. Okay. I'm with a you. He's with an I. Okay. Okay. Imposter. All right. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I guess we can start from how did you get involved in property or or in crowd or how does that journey look like so i guess you, you obviously are, i mean i know that you've started in property and then you've gone into crowd but can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so uh, really at a, a young age uh, my granddad was a property developer um he had his own business a really successful business uh, passed it on to my dad um my dad was there and he was like tom you need to get involved and i was like no thank you it's not for me it's not for me um decided to ignore everything they said and i yeah. went university to become a physio um, that was my okay. um and then actually realized maybe it wasn't my dream and yeah. i already had a property at this point which i was renting to my friends um so i went to uni and decided whether to go into property and it just flooded from there um and as yeah. i said the crowd now for, and that just developed slowly uh, nothing big just the odd buy to let um renting places out moving to these mm -hmm. while i actually could do a, a house up to sell Yep. And got to the stage where I became mortgage free in one of my properties. Uh, nice. it was like my house, um, my dream. And yeah, so really Crowd would run alongside this. So when I worked for Crowd Property, it was it's a perfect platform for working with people like myself. Um, not just your very experienced people, but also your your newbies, people that want to get into it. And it's kind of like sharing my journey, uh, but also we have 250 years uh, of experience on our property side of our property. Yeah. So obviously, I don't know everything. Um, I learn stuff every day from developers, um, and they help me out. It's getting that network and connecting people. So it's, it's mm. a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, you've got some really cool guys in crowd, like mad experience so it is good yeah. to, to use that network for sure it is um, and like uh, our property director is a, a gentleman called andrew hall 
um, who's got 35 plus years of experience in both commercial and residential. Um, mm -hmm. so we have a town planner that works for us, we've got 15 years experience. So if, if you say you bring a project to me and I've got Alec, I've literally, I, I've got no idea how you'd overcome this. Mm -hmm. It's literally a small phone call for myself, two minute phone call, like, Andrew, this is a situation and I'll be able to give you that info straight away and then use it to benefit your journey. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it sounds awesome. Um, we'll get into exactly what crowd are now. I'm just going to apologize. Every time I nod my head, the mic just goes up and down. So it just looks <laughs> so strange. Um, so I apologize. Um, cool. So crowd property, what, what exactly do crowd do? Um, like, what are they? Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of so, so we are senior debt lenders. Okay. So yeah specialise in property development, property finance, and it's yep. just new builds. It's anything residential. Okay. Right. Uh, so I'll explain a quick story. So when I first joined Crowd Property, uh, which was near enough four years ago now, um, it was all peer-to-peer. -peer. It was all focusing on our investors that have signed up to Crowd Property to then basically raise funds for your development. Okay. Yep. I think the first project I ever dealt with, it took two and a half weeks to fund. So it's a bit sketchy for both the, the developer and plus me saying that we'd be able to fund this project okay yeah. now a project like that takes 11 seconds to fully fund um and the right, reason okay. because obviously we're an established company we've got the brand uh, we've got 100 percent payback record and we're now moving away from the peer-to-peer -peer because we've got institutions uh that will come in onto the projects yeah that would then basically guarantee funding for your property project okay, okay. And, but we now got to the stage where we we don't rely just on joe blogs down the road putting a thousand pound of his cash into a project we now tell people you don't have to worry about where your money comes from we've got multiple streams right okay that was one of my questions i was going to ask where do you get the money from because i do remember initially it being peer-to-peer -peer when i first researched about crowd um but obviously now that seems to have moved on which makes total sense um so we, we, we still have that aspect and we, we won't fully move away from it because that is us it's all about joining the investors and the developers together um yeah. we all know what it's like investing within a bank you're probably getting 0 0.001 returns on any savings account at the moment um yeah we're still offering that for lending side, but the borrowing side, making that journey much more smoother um, by combining. And obviously, the longer we carry on, then the more institutions will want to get involved. Um, and it was only last month we signed a three hundred million pound contract with an institution, so we have that money ready to deploy. Yeah. Okay. Big money. Big money. Big money. So, so what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so essentially, just because I want to, I want to make sure I want to dumb everything down because I think that that's the way forward. So, if I have a deal, I can simply come to you, and you can tell me whether that it is a deal, so I can get that sort of expertise there, and then you can see whether you will fund the deal essentially. Is that is that what we're talking about? Like, yeah. Bare bones? So, uh, I think the, the main things you say yourself would look for, and what we want to offer is first of all speed, ease, and certainty in yeah. whatever order. So obviously, the speed we can get offers over you too quickly. So you can give the vendor clarification that you're interested in the deal. Yeah, so you've got the funds behind for the deal. Obviously, then the certainty knowing we've gave you that offer, it's actually going to happen. Uh, yeah. what my main things personally, I keep to a quick yes or no answer. So I wouldn't offer on a project if I wouldn't think it would fund it for the start. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know, it, it, you might not even want the deal at the end. You might speak to the vendor and actually go, no, this one's not for us. But at least there you've got everything you need to take it to the next step if needed. Yeah. Which is a good thing. And it's a powerful thing in the market because as we know, the market is just shit hot at the moment yeah move, moving fast M yeah move yeah that's the word moving fast um and then when you've got that you want to be able to go to a vendor or an agent and say right here's my offer crowd property are backing us on this there you go give that to them and then it gives you that time then to maybe sort out what else is needed uh yeah. your construction team or whatever because so you can then forget about the finance aspects because you know we're there 
and then you mm-hmm. can you do best and that's where we go yeah okay okay and so what what constitutes as a deal because a lot of people will now be watching this a lot of people um will be <laughs> watching this you know the thousands of people um and they'll be thinking hold on a minute so i can get a deal and i can just come to you guys and finance it simply th- this is easy this game's game's easy so what first of all what what constitutes as a deal um and then we can get into what you guys actually offer um in terms of how what can you fund because we we know well if for me it's not been a hundred percent um you usually do obviously a percentage of the the purchase and then maybe a hundred percent of the refurb or something like that so first of all what constitutes as a deal and then what what you act what can you actually fund Okay, so I'd say if we start with what we could fund first, I think it's the best way. Yeah. Uh, so we can fund anything with a residential aspect to it. So that's a new build through to a small refurb, HMOs, larger refurb extensions, uh, modular, joint ventures, portfolios, a- anything that's got a residential aspect to it. Okay. So there's the deals we're looking for. But regarding what constitutes a deal is more from the person involved as the developer. And what's yep. them? Because obviously a lender is not going to lend if it's negative, when it doesn't stack. So first of all, we want it to stack of what you're doing. And now, what? Sorry, what? What do you mean by stack? So stacking is obviously the money that we as the lender are lending the developer mm-hmm. is sure that if something was to go wrong, we're covered as the senior debt, and then you're also they're covered that they can actually escape and not make themselves completely bankrupt. Yeah. So that's security on both parties. Um, one of the things that crowd property requires first charge uh, guarantee on the security of the property. Yep. Um, so if you bought me three simple figures, okay, and now it doesn't matter if it doesn't stack. This is the thing because we're a company that won't just say, Ali, no. We'll say, Ali, no, because of a reason. Yeah. We'll look into that. And you'll get that within 15 minutes of sending me an email or applying online. Yeah. Um, so all we need is the purchase price, the cost of yep. works, and then the gross development value of the finished project. Okay. So once, once we've got that on that project, I can then look at the numbers, ask it what you're actually doing, because that affects, you might be a long-term investment for yourselves, like a HMO, so you're getting income from it, or it could be a quick flip. Um, and then it's down to you what you would, what, what you think would be a good return of investment for yourself because yeah. um, if you were doing a small flip and only making two thousand pounds is it worth it for 12 months no yeah. mm-hmm. but it's not for me to say twenty thousand. is it worth it that's for you to say yeah so we just make sure it's secure in both parties okay yeah makes total sense total sense um and so can can absolute newbies um use crowd property who don't have a, a portfolio how, how does that work is there like sort of prerequisites to to be able to actually use crowd yeah so uh, we 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 are an aim to be the best sme um lender in the in the in the market okay so this is dealing with experienced people all the way through to newbies um, and the difference being is the experienced people have the team already around them. Okay. Yeah. So they've probably done multiple projects, they've got their team, they're all sorted. Whereas the new is probably they haven't been in contact with people yet. So they, they've got them, they might have the money, they may not have the money. Um, it's more connecting them to say, right, we'd love to help you on this, but yeah. you need a good power team around you. And if they've got that good power team, we could make suggestions. Um, I'll add this into further the conversation that we do have a new tool on our website where a project's proposed and it actually you can search for local architects in the area, local planners in the area, and build your team through all our contacts that we show. Mm. It's a useful thing. Uh, yeah. If you didn't use that then and you had an inkling of who you could approach, I don't know, past experiences, bring them together because that's the core team. And then we, in effect, become a member of that team as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes total sense. So, going to distill that all down. So, if they a, a total newbie gets a deal, um, they can essentially come to you with the purchase price, the cost of works, and the GDV, which is the value of the project at the end. 
um, <laughs> you will be able to tell them whether it is uh, a good deal or if it's not a good deal, why, and then potentially fund that deal. Exactly. Right? Like Noel Edmonds would say, deal or no deal. Deal or no deal. And just to clarify, um, when you take first charge on the property, meaning if it goes tits up, that you guys get your money out first, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I just want to clarify terminology just in case, because this one, episode one, we don't want to get too technical too soon. <laughs> so, no, exactly. Sweet. Okay, cool. So that we've got some good information on you, good information on crowd. We know you're the man right now. So people listening will hopefully be like, yeah, this guy is extremely credible. I'm going to listen. Um, so I'm going to roll down my notes because we are, we are on how to start, right? So there are a lot of like videos or a lot of people out there that will have you sort of believe that everything is easy, that this game is easy. You know, we're going to wake up and, and be property millionaires by tomorrow. Um, so we want to, we want to peel back the hood a little bit, lift the lid, um, and just talk as much truth as we possibly can and help people where we possibly can. So it would be good to uh, first understand how you took your first steps in property um, what, and sort of what you were looking for. You know, what did you do? How did you get involved initially with your specifically, your portfolio? Uh, so, so with my property, how I, how I started was pure luck, really. It was, I was a semi-pro tennis player. So obviously that helped with finances and different things. I had a, like a good job, a good savings account. So I could input my money into it. But obviously, yeah. I, that's not the situation for 90% of the people if they're starting from scratch. Yeah. I, I learned by my mistakes in my personal thing. Uh, like the house I live in now, I, I, I got for 180,000 three years ago, um, and it's just been valued at 480. Um, yeah. And I've got about 100K cash in it. Yeah. I've made some mistakes, uh, stuff that I should now can pass on to other people if they're going into the similar situation. I've done commercial land, again, made mistakes, um, because I hadn't been to all these property groups which you were talking about. Now, if I knew that at the time, that's probably where I'd focus in networking groups, um, purely because you've got a room full of 50, 60 people, or I know it's been on Zoom over lockdown, but you've got 50, yep. 60 people in a room, and they're all like-minded people. Um, you don't know who you're sat next to. So you could be sat next to a millionaire that's got ready to invest cash into people's products. Got no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it always goes down to your, your, your network is your net worth. I know it's the cheesiest cliche saying, but it really is. And that the older you get, the more you realize that that is absolutely the case. Um, so no, yeah, that's cool. So it's I was going to say, if, if you would have done something different, then you would have started networking and all of these sorts of things first before you started going you yeah. know, knee deep. Yeah, exactly. It's a, like, I'll just explain like one problem I had, and now I always say to people about how important uh, a survey is at the start. Um, I think normally if you go to buy a house, you get given price brackets to what type of survey you'd like. And yeah. this is from a residential point of view, um, where they offer one that's like 300 quid, 500 pounds and a grand. Me being me at the time, I was like, oh, just 300 quid, do that nice and easy. It's going to save somebody in the bank and go out and go clubbing or something like that when I was younger. Um, and then the, one of the first properties I bought um, had a really bad state roof on it. Um, and the survey, the cheap one, didn't class the roof as a part of the survey. So they didn't even go into the loft. Right. So I organized this survey, came around, and got to get it the green light. I was all happy and everything. I went to purchase it, purchased it. And then I took a chimney down inside this property. Obviously, you had all the construction team here doing it. And then they mm -hmm. gave me and said, uh, Tom, we've got a problem. And there was like 30 dead squirrels in the loft, um, all like skeletons, basically. Nice. And uh, yeah, beautiful. And they said what they've done is they've through every supporting piece of timber in your, your roof structure. So we have to take oh, wow. start afresh. So something that was going to cost, I think, £400 for a removal of a chimney with a little bit of scaffolding turned into £22,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... I paid that survey, which was the top end or even middle end, then that would have been covered and then I wouldn't probably have put on the property anyway. So yeah, a big yeah. budget to actually do the house is eat, a, like, eat in one chunk. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So now I've got that knowledge to say, right, if you go into an old building or you, you're doing a massive reverb, don't cut corners. Go in, yeah. work out your budgets, and then find out if that property is right for you to start with. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, and then in terms of, so we, we're going to have lots of people watching this who have, like you said, not not everyone's got bags of money or like has their brother or dad or mum that has got 100k in the bank that they can they can lend off and, and all of those sorts of things. Some people will have that absolutely and more power to you, but I would like to get into some different scenarios. I've called it the money time matrix. Um yeah. of being like <laughs> so the the scenarios are if you've got money and time what should you do? If you've got money plus limited time, what should you do? Um, if you've got loads of time, but limited money or no time and no money. So these are, these should cover the, the scenarios that everyone is in, uh, I expect mm. to, to, to some degree. So it would be nice to, to know. So the people watching that have got money and time, they, they're obviously living the absolute dream. Um, what would you do if if you're a man right now or whoever with with money plus time what what would you do in in property obviously we're not talking about going clubbing or like <laughs> well i think i think regarding if it's money with time and money no time there is one answer to focus on first and that is don't rush because rushing means you get a massage figures Okay, the only rush would be really with money and no time if we start there is the time of the vendor. So they might be wanting to sell their property very fast, for example. Yeah, that means you've got to act fast because you've got no time, but got the money to do it. But you still want to make sure you've done your due diligence into that project. You just don't want to go there straight away because you've got bags of cash and go, right, I'll give you 400k for that land because you're saying it's got outline planning. If you don't look at that outline planning and get a company like Crowd Property to review it, you could have that and not get development finance for five, six, seven years or whatever it is. So yep. it kind of eliminates that risk around it. Whereas yep. the other side, if you've got money and zero time again, um, we, we, you can call yourselves as an armchair investor, for example, where you could actually invest into Crowd Properties projects. So yep. that type of style. Um, or, or or ours or, our or, 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 or yeah or your project <laughs> and exactly bring it on to someone that and it's very difficult because obviously you've got to make sure it's all secure for both parties and different things the trust is there they're, they're reliable people because you can't advise someone to give someone money uh without that justification that you're going to get it back yeah uh, so me personally i couldn't say ali it is 100 grand for example um because obviously i know you but it's if you're in a networking room, it's something you shouldn't do unless you deep do your due diligence into that person as a per, as a personally towards their projects, towards their characteristics, yeah. um, and, and that's why I say networking is that important. So it's a, it's a long-winded answer because I think both scenarios require the same thing, um, and then but if you've got no time and you've got that cash, you see a deal. Let someone like Crowd Property be able to vet it for you, to give it the once over, to give you the clarification that is a deal in the future. Because it's not going to be completed in two weeks because of the legal side, the valuation side. And if the vendor understands that, then actually you're giving yourself more time to complete deals. Yeah. Because you're not going to, if, if you're a cash buyer, for example, you're not just going to give your cash to the solicitor and say, I'm buying that. They have to have valuations, which take a couple of weeks. The legal process takes four to five weeks, probably longer at the moment. So all this gives you that time. Yeah. Okay. So then on the flip side of that, once if you have, you've got loads of time, but you've got no money. So let's say you haven't, you haven't just sold your house. You've got bags of time, no money. Is it, will we go back into the, the network play there? I would say, obviously about finding someone who basically has the opposite to you in terms of has loads of money but no time Th that to me makes you make a great team right as long as obviously you go for a beer or you've got good rapport with that person so you can actually trust them because ultimately you'll be going into business together um but yeah would that be something you would do if if you had 
hundred percent because again you don't know who you're sat next to at a networking group um and then when you can buy people that have like i'm a very bubbly person relationship person i could probably sell sand to egyptians um that's my characteristic and i, I like chatting to people gaining that relationships and i bring people together whereas mm-hmm. to me it, it, I know I work in a, a finance company, but finance isn't my strong point as such because, yes, I look at figures, I can understand figures, different things, but if you put like spreadsheets together, I can't justify them all the time. Yeah. So I, I kind of adapt them in my own way where I understand. So if I was going into property now, I'd go, oh, I need a figures person. So yep. I'd look around that room for a finance expert, or well, not an expert, expert in finance, but someone that can. I could drum figures too. He could tell me different profits, different areas, because I know I could go to the vendor and get that relationship and be able to adapt our strategy to it. Yeah. Uh, so it's all finding the person that's most opposite you, but still yes. the business person. And I think networking is the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because you've got you've got your power team there, then, um, and those are the people that you can succeed in every area, not just one yeah 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 we've got qa that does all of that sort of stuff um so i think that is definitely the way forward you you definitely need someone with expertise on figures um because it pickles my mind um again it it pickles my mind can i deal with it every day (laughs) (laughs) that's thing i think we're very similar at the relationship um building like that sort of thing which is why we get on so well um so yeah we need people that complement our our weaknesses and we our strengths complement their weaknesses right so yeah it's yeah. a marriage made say, in heaven it is it is with us and I, I think that if i was now looking for one person in a team i'd probably try and find an ex-surveyor um yeah. because they understand property yeah now, someone like me going on right move and finding a house for sale you think oh that's cheap I guarantee if I bought an ex surveyor or a current surveyor that wanted to go into property, mm-hmm. to property they'd instantly say, Oh, there's a, there's a subsidence in that side of the house. That's bad, obviously. Um, yep. and I point out all these on day one. Yeah. And not draw it out for three or four weeks. You've got a finance arranged at this point, and then you, you get a valuation done, and they're like, Oh, no. Um, yep. Having a surveyor, if you could ever buy one, that would be happy to join would be the, the perfect way forward yeah exactly well uh, like i just brought a deal to you and now we're looking for a, a commercial surveyor just to give us like you know dive into some deeper due diligence but if you've got that guy on your team you know that's like tom brady just throwing you the ball you know it's, it is it's always it happening. is it's always like gonna happen or having Ronaldo, the goat, um, on your team. Oh, I don't um, know, Messi's the goat. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't scored in three games, just, just FYI. Oh, right. um, so I, I was going to go into how do you find people with money and how do you find people with time? But I think we've covered that off on networking, right? Networking, building relationships. Like it is as simple as like doing exactly what I've done, essentially, um, and exactly what you've did back in the day it's just talking to people talking to people um using your strengths when you're in the room to, to just build some relationships and you never know where these relationships go and net net people are good people people want to help you like no one's going to go oh you you fall you know step away from mm-hmm. you know you know zero um they're gonna want to help you you know yeah. um that's what we are like as humans um yeah. that's that's how i feel anyway so just just start networking just just start right and th- that's one of the great things that the videos and on youtube and all these people that make it seem so easy the the best thing i think they do is they make you just start because they get rid of the barriers in your head so then you just you just do and actually you end up stumbling your way into something decent um as long as you obviously put the time and the, the effort and the work in and all that stuff so i think i think that's one thing they do really well um just scrolling my notes um professional uh <laughs> so the other things are we want to get into some more scenarios um because we i love scenarios i, I want to be as practical as possible you know so people can actually take the information and go right this is what i need to do so 
again, there's people watching this this podcast or listening to this podcast, and they're going to have different amounts in their bank. Some of them are going to have ten thousand. Some of them are going to have a hundred thousand, and then some people are going to have five hundred thousand. So, from your perspective, because I said you've got you've got the experience, I would love to know what you would do starting with ten thousand pounds. So. Ten thousand pounds has just come into your bank. You know, I don't know what you've done to get it. You've just won it in a casino. Bam, ten thousand yeah. pounds. What is your next move in property? Go. Right. So I would say if ten thousand was to hit my bank, obviously it's not. I think everyone wants if they go to property is to put property to be their main source of income. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ten thousand in the bank. Obviously, I couldn't leave my day job um so what i do is run something alongside so maybe by finding that relationship that we talked about earlier is to then say someone like yourself that got that trusted relationship with to start with that ten thousand with some interest to pay back once you finish your project okay however or you could go down the armchair investing route and actually yep. start investing in projects say on crowd properties website mm-hmm. You get to know what the money's doing. You get to know how it all works. It's paid yes. back at the end. So you're gaining your knowledge at that time. And obviously, you're not going to make thousands and thousands of pounds on it, but it's a start. Okay. Yeah. Or if you, if, you, if, you, if you wanted to, like you say, you could invest, like you want to spread the risk, you want to mitigate the risk. So you don't want to just give Alec, here's 10K, because if it does go wrong, you've got nothing back. Yep. And all of a sudden, you're still working in whatever area you're working in, and now you've got no part of it. Um, so it's kind of utilising that, um, maybe courses, um, so you can actually not spend all 10000 on a course, but go to shows, go to events, or start building up, because you're gaining relationships, and that's much more valuable than that £10,000. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, Simon Zucci has a, a course. Um, I'm not aware of the price of the course, but obviously things like that, as you said, it, although it, you're spending ten thousand pounds, it's an investment. Investment into relationships, and those relationships uh, will be worth more than ten thousand pounds come the end of of your career, right? Um, yeah, I, like, I say to people like like Simon's course, for example. Again, I'm not quite sure on the price, uh, but they say, "Oh, Tom, have you done Simon Zucci's Mastermind?" And it's like, well, I don't kind of need to because I've got that network of people for what I do as a living. Yeah. I've been to them, I've sat in with the room, I spoke to all the clients, I deal with them on a daily basis because they propose projects to me. Um, but that money, like you say, is invested because you're building that team and that's oh, yeah. it's gold, gold mining. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, this goes back, I don't know if you, Simon Sinek, is, is the infinite versus finite game it's like you're not you're not playing to win with with ten thousand pounds especially like you you just want to stay in the game get yourself in the game you're 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 meant to be playing this game forever so when you look at it that way ten thousand pounds will really not be much in the grand scheme of things um the other thing i thought which i would do and i have done myself so i was an agent in canary wharf for a while um when i wanted to learn about property so get become an agent become a surveyor become a obviously that's slightly harder than just becoming an agent but lowest barrier to entry become an agent start meeting landlords getting to know landlords like building up that side of, of your contacts as well that if you've got ten thousand pound obviously it's not a life-changing amount of money but as you said you can you can use it but i, I if it was me and i ten thousand pound dropped to my account and i was starting again I'd probably become an agent and yeah, do what we call it an earn and learn. So it would be invest the 10,000 pounds into one of our projects, your projects, whoever's projects. And um, yeah, you learn on the side, you become a little bit more involved than you would if you were just like an armchair investor. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's the way. And, and I could go back to where we, we started about the networking side of it. It is said yeah. 10,000 pound now and you were like wondering what to do. Um, you could meet five other trusted people with your relationship building skills. You've got five people now. They could all have 10 grand. So in fact, yeah. now your company has got 50,000 pounds. And that's there is a starting point because 
obviously we know property is really bucket high at the moment, but there's some good deals out there. Uh, probably not in Bristol because it's expensive. Probably not in Birmingham, but if you went further north, you can buy houses uh, for forty thousand yeah. um, pounds. I guess either the most best areas. I, I don't know. They could be. It could be a really good deal, um, and it might only need ten k cost of works inside. Yeah, and you can buy that, and there's your first project as a team. Yeah, 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 and that gives you the credibility. You know, yeah, it's definitely just just get that first deal over the line as well, and you've got that credibility. You've got you got the learnings. You might make some mistakes and all that sort of stuff. So perfect. Um, okay, so that's the ten thousand pound. A hundred thousand pounds. So you've just, you've just, you know, it's one of them ones. Someone's give you a scratch card, you've scratched it off, and bam, you've won a hundred thousand pounds. It's, it's unbelievable right now. The, the emotions are flying. What do you do? Does, do you change? Does that, does that change? So I would still act on the first principle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not, well, obviously, it's a good sum of money. But you don't want to just quit your day, day job and go straight in property all guns blazing because it could be a long time before the investment returns to you. So then yeah. obviously put strains on relationships. If you're with someone thinking, oh, I can't go out tonight, or we can't go for a meal because all our money's been invested in something else. Yeah. So I've split it up into quarters, first of all, and put chunks of 25,000 virtually in my head. 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000. Uh, where you can actually think about things and say, right, if I put this to Alec, because you're doing a project, again, I would be more inclined to invest in someone else for mm -hmm. a, at this stage. Obviously, you can go for the small purchase of a, a small flip of a property if you wanted, but then I'm thinking about migrating the risks and not putting it all into one chunk. It's yeah. right, Alec, here's 25 grand, this is it, or maybe 50 grand and let's do it together. So I'll bring that money needed for your deal. Um, because we could go into the levels of lending of a senior debt, like crowd property, um, where let's just say we could lend 70% of a purchase price and then 100% of your works, you're going to need that 30% from somewhere. So if you were bringing a amount of money, but I was giving you, say, 50,000 to put towards it as well, and that all was agreed with the purchase price, so it all worked, then that is a great starting point because then yep. you could have an agreement between us all signed saying at the end of this project it's going to return this you get your chunk back plus whatever it is uh, as a percentage and then it oh, wow so obviously a hundred thousand is a good figure to have yeah 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 okay so you're splitting it up into quarters potentially and diversifying it essentially so you mitigate risk right correct yeah you just okay cool go all your eggs in one basket yeah okay that makes total sense so You'd go, and and by that you're th you're thinking potentially invest with someone else, then then potentially do a JV, um, uh, and and things like that. That's what we're saying. Yeah. So yeah. So joint joint ventures, JV, um, is a brilliant thing. But obviously, yeah, traditional lenders hate it because obviously there's more risk for them. Thinking right, well, we fall out halfway through the project or something like that. What's in play? Um, mm -hmm. You've got that team. And you're all bringing money to the table. So you're doing that joint venture together. It's you're in it together. You've both got money in the deal. So you both want to succeed. Whereas if you put all the money in the deal, you'd be like, Tom, what you bring it? You've got zero risk in this. If it goes wrong, I'm the one that's basically losing 100K, 50K, or whatever it is. Tom, yeah. you lose it. So I'd be happy you wouldn't. Be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's migrating that risk. Okay, cool. Then we're on the next scenario. I'm not sure where this money's come from, but okay, you've, you've just you've just won the lottery. You've got to won the lottery at 500k, and you or the po the postcode lottery. Postcode, that's about right. Yeah, you've you've won the postcode lottery. <laughs> um, you know they've knocked on your door. Someone's knocking at your door. They've done that. That's the I think that's the theme tune. Um, yeah. And he stood outside, and he's got the check, five hundred thousand pounds. He's just about to hit your bank. What do you do? Right. So me personally, what I would do with this, okay, because I, I'm a, I like holding on to property. I don't like selling if I can have it. Uh, so regarding if I had five hundred thousand pounds in the bank, I'd probably go and get as many I to let with well, mortgages as possible in like hit. So I could do like a small refurb, all the work myself, so I wouldn't have to rely on others. 
Okay, so I wouldn't say structural issues in a house. So obviously, I'll get a good surveyor to come out and say it's fine, or that's malarkey. Um, yep. But yeah, for me personally, I'd want the biggest portfolio I could get, and then just start renting it all out. So I set up a limited company first of all. So obviously, it all has tax implications, which is the best way. So definitely go to a solicitor for that um, and get the advice needed. But then, the bigger the portfolio you can get with good rental incomes. And then that money is streaming in every month. Uh, before you know it, that's it's a brilliant investment because property always rises. Um, so in 10 years' time, that property could be double the value. Yep. Um, if I saw a really good property, probably put more chunk of a deposit in it uh, just just for holding it, just so I know that that property is there, but less mortgage, probably living it myself while doing the rest up. So it's oh, 500,000 would be amazing. That's not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So essentially, at that point, 500k, you would become, uh, you know, essentially a like, full time sort of property entrepreneur holding buy to lets. Um, yeah, so that would just be my strategy to start with. But you know, I think if you asked anyone else that was in property, they'd go, I want to do my own new build development. Um, but I think with, with new builds, especially, something always goes wrong at some point. Mm-hmm. It's, you could be digging the foundations and find a skeleton in the ground, and then the whole thing's gone to pop. Um, yeah. For me, I'd want that. I'd go a joint venture for a new build, I think, straight away, would be my so bringing the expertise around me. Um, where obviously you could probably not even require funding for private, you could probably purchase a part of land for 100K, um, do a build for 200K, get a nice, juicy four or five bed house depending on the area, obviously, um, yep. that money and obviously the pound per square foot. But then it could all work out that that could be your dream house to live in. But if that's what you wanted, then that's your choice, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think myself, I think I would, uh, uh, we are, we're big on HMOs right now. Um, so I would look to, to basically do as many HMOs as humanly possible with 500K and just get that cash flow in you know a few a few 10 beds would be absolutely fantastic you know yeah, it's, it's soon will come at it yeah i know we know we know um so and then we're going to move on to so that's that's the scenario so if anyone's listening and they've got 10 100 or five hundred thousand pound in their bank that's what you should do if you've got five hundred thousand pound drop me a message yeah because i want to <laughs> i want to i want to know about it um because yeah, I'm going to start doing the postcode lottery if that's the case. Um, okay, so we we've spoke about like all, all these like, holding properties and things like that, and uh, all of that stuff, and that sounds amazing. But for for a lot of people, that's quite a high barrier to entry. Um, there's a lot of things you need to do, a lot of time it takes. So, what other ways can people? Because we might have some people here that are literally just thinking about getting into the industry and, and GDV and you know XYZ and all that. It's like it can be discombobulating. So what other ways are there to make money in property? Um now I've got a few down here. I know you've got a few there. So if do you want to start off with with one and just talk around that? Uh but, yeah, so our property as an example or in terms of so um like deal sourcing and things like that other ways to make money in property apart from uh, winning winning the postcode lottery and buying some buy to lets i think i think first of all primarily if you got the property or you did a development then obviously you've got that income coming in for the staff but other ways yes if you've got your deal sorted um you have your slash you could become a broker if you did all your trading and licensing and everything behind you um it all depends on that person it's a very difficult question because deal. Everyone looks at deal sources and brokers differently. Okay, yeah. Um, so obviously, lenders work alongside brokers if they bring them deals. That's brilliant. They get they get a fee out of it. They they move on. But I think go back to your example of being an agent is probably the best way to get into it because one, you're gaining relationships with everyone. You're yeah. probably speaking to so many cash buyers. That ring up and say, oh, I like that property of a cash buyer, they're on your record. Now, I'm not yeah. saying nick the database because obviously that's not allowed. GDPR? 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's those relationships that are critical. Um, mm-hmm. Because out, out of work, you go for a beer, can't you? It's, you have a chat, it's, you're talking to someone. Um, yeah. These things happen, right? Like, yeah. That's what I, you got to do. I'm just trying to keep this legal. Um, but yeah, it's all about, <laughs> it's all about <laughs> again, it's those relationships because if you wanted to make money in other ways, then it could go down that route. But is that what you want as a person? Do you want to become a deal sourcer? Would you be yeah. happy in a deal source? That's the problem because you're giving other people deals there. Now, mm-hmm. if I found something really good in Birmingham, um, and I had to pass it to you, Alec, because you came to be as hired me, I'd be like, damn, I wish I was involved in this project. But then, yeah, conflicts of interest, I probably wouldn't be allowed. So it's it's kind of, and it's probably similar to what I do now, actually, that you're submitting a deal to me through Crowd Property. But Alec, this is a really good one. This is like, I wouldn't be allowed to invest my money into you, especially if you borrow through Crowd Property. So it's just not allowed. It's FTA regulations that I couldn't yeah. stop in that. Ah, okay, okay. But there are obviously there are people that do deal source, right? So that that is an option if you think you want to go down that route. But it's not as easy as like just getting a deal and going, oh, I, I found this deal on right move. Here's the link. You've got to do a lot of work, right? You've got to make sure the figures stack. You've got to build all the relationships with the vendors and the agents and stuff like that. So it, it is a lot of work to well, just this pass is the, thing, Alex. the this deal is the- this is the thing, Alec, because yes, you'd think that, but yeah, I work with deal sources that bring uh, clients to us and they don't do any of that. <laughs> wow. It's their business reputation at the end of the day. It's, it's hard to categorize what is a deal sourcer on Facebook, for example, and yeah. what's actually a proper good deal sourcer. Because at the start, you just don't know. It's just like, I found this deal from a deal sourcer or they come to us and say, I've got this deal. Um, but at that first point, you just don't know. Um, and then when you drum into it, then you request the information, then you find out. Then that's where you say you've got all the, the planning documents, you've got the team all sorted. This is what you could do. It's got full planning permission. Everything's there. But you've got mm-hmm. to just leave it to a client and say, here's a plot of land. And that, that's the difference. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah, um, exactly. Right. Everything you'd like. Do it. Yeah. Do it to your best of your capabilities. Yeah. Um, yeah the the other way i thought um so I, I know a few people that have amazing contacts right they know lots of people with lots of money um so one thing that we're looking to do with them is give them a commission based on the amount that they raise um for us so if you're someone who has those contacts but doesn't have doesn't want to get into property but but can leverage those contacts because you've built trust with them and they will listen to you um you know it's it's very it's an easy conversation when we're talking about property because it's likely that they already invest in property so yeah. it's you know it's one of them where you know my contact can just approach them and say hey we've got a you know, some property investments, do you want to take a look at it? And you're doing them a favor by showing them a really good deal and they're going to make some money off it. And so, you know, that works down the chain, right? Like we're going to make money. The person in the middle is going to make money who's connecting us and then the investor is going to make money. So uh, these these people are, you know, semi-few and far between. Not everyone knows everyone with loads of money, um, but that's one way uh, I know someone who is making money doing that for us. Um, yeah. So it's basically they're, they're controlling their finances, aren't they, at the end of the day? They've got their trust in them. Um, but again, if the, the person, to say it's yourself doing it, you've got to have that trust and that cred- credibility behind you. Um, spread the risk. Because again, if you see a really good deal, let's just say you know a, a, an amazing footballer who's got a million quid, he's like, Alec, here's a million quid. I want you to invest it for me and you can get something out of it. If you put all that into, I don't know, shopping centre down the road and then... COVID part three happens um, yeah. when it closes and then half of it doesn't open up again. What's that mini quid worth now? Um, yeah. You We've put all problems in one basket. It's down on you. You're in trouble. You're going to panic. It's, it's just about spreading that risk. Yeah. 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 And I think the other ways is just like you said, just being an armchair investor, like just investing yourself, obviously with no sort of, there's no middleman involved. Um, it's just, you and them 
And then investing and holding, which is what you said you would do with 500K, which is the, the standard way that everyone went. Because I think when people think about making money in property, they instantly go to investing and flipping, investing and holding. But there are other yeah. ways that you can get involved yeah. in the industry, like what we've just said, deal sourcing, becoming an agent, raising money. Like there are, there are multiple different ways, right? Um, yeah. Well, you just hit the nail on the head. Like if you went from your, your property story from start to finish, you'd probably flip, 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 have enough money, hold. And then yeah. you've got income plus you've still got money left over to do another project. I would probably say project number three is where people tend to get stuck because they've invested all their cash down into their deals. They've got nothing. They find a new deal and they assume a lender would give them 100%, for example, towards a purchase where that's not the case. So like with crowd property, we'd go, we could actually go depending project dependent up to 75% of the purchase price or market value. Yeah. So you know you're going to need at least 25% deposit there. And if you haven't got it, you're kind of going back into investors here. So you're going back to where you first started to say, I need this money to put towards this point, but at least you've got the cred- credibility behind it at that yeah. stage. Um, and then you can start holding places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about um, gaining some credibility through, say, flipping your own house that you live in? Um, you know, you, you bought it. It's, it, wasn't, it was a bit of a shithole when you moved in, and now you've done it up, and you're looking to get into property. Does that, is that, will that suffice? Is that, is that enough sort of for someone to go, oh, good, I can see you've done a good job here? Um, do you think like if, if you had a property that obviously you lived in that you flipped, it, can we start there? Is that enough? Oh, it's definitely, yeah. It, I'd definitely say it's a good starting point because uh, I won't, obviously I can't talk about past projects that have been bought to myself. But if I use my personal experience about the property I'm in now, which I've just sold, um, bought it at a very cheap price and invested lots of my money into it, that I know how much it costs to fit a bathroom. I know how much it costs to fit a kitchen, yeah. uh, heating, ev- everything involved, new roof, obviously, uh, in different scenarios, uh, outside landscaping, driveways. And then when people bring me projects very similar to say, obviously they can't live in there because that's one thing we don't have that um, you're not allowed to live in a property while borrowing money because we're unregulated. So there's a yep. difference between the regulation laws. So if they were doing it for an investment and they say the kitchen's going to cost two grand, it's like, well, where are you getting your kitchen from? Where's the fitting costs? Yep. Yeah. I'll do that myself. Have you got experience? I can't fit kitchens, so I've got someone to do it for me that has experience. But I know that the kitchen's probably going to cost more than two grand, depending on size, obviously. Uh, yep. I know it's going to cost... 700 to a grand to fit it um so that automatically shows if they're saying they're purchasing two grand for a kitchen they're already failing mm-hmm. so it probably goes on to like you say is don't massage figures internally always use worst case scenarios uh, because the surveyors involved especially at crowd property will review all this and go oh you know you need to budget more on windows or a driveway um and all these figures actually shows in someone's appraisal. So yeah. you could go through it and actually, if you bought me a project, Ali, you, you'd say, break it all down. Just break it all down to all the costs per item for the house. And then you get to see, because if you've experienced it, it's a brilliant start because you're realistic yeah. in your first project. So if you went to a lender and say, I haven't done an investment, but I've done my own. This is what I did start to finish. This is my cost plan for the next place, which is very similar. Okay, just say there's no planning needed or that type of works. It's just yep. or reverb. Then yeah, that's good. That's a great starting point. Okay, awesome, cool. Um, and then I, I think we spoke around this a lot, but we'll we'll get right into the you know the thick of it. Uh, a power team. So uh, a lot of people talk about a power team. Um, so a power team essentially a team of individuals that have you know, different skill sets that are relevant to property, right? So a surveyor, a, an architect, a, this, that, and the other. So I guess the, the question is, who do you need? Because I, I know where, back, back in the day when me and a few of my friends and my brother were talking about getting into property, we were just like, we, should, we don't know anyone. Um, so where, 
who do you need? Where do you find them? Obviously, you said about on the Crowd Properties website that they've got that tool that they could use. Yeah. Where else? Where else can we find them? And and who do we actually need um, throughout the process? So we could go straight back to that networking point first of all, because mm-hmm. there is not just necessarily they're all in property in some kind, but you'll have uh, you'll have brokers there, for example. The brokers will understand the figures. So again, a good relationship with a, a broker if you wanted to go down that route. Um, that obviously you could find you different lenders to use. Uh, so I get approached by brokers every day, for example, that they've got deals for their clients. But then, like you said, a decent architect. Uh, but from a new from a newbie point of view, it's yep. all about that project manager. So a project manager is a definite go to person, or find someone like that via the networking. Give it a Google, see who does property project management and yep. there's still be companies out there because when you've got them, they can control the whole process. Yep. Um, so you're paying them their wage, but they could come in on the deal. There could be loads of different structures for it. Um, but then it kind of puts a newbie's responsibility onto someone else, which yep. is very valuable. Um, but yeah, like planning consultant, if needed, architects, uh, a decent lender that knows what they're actually doing and lending money towards because uh, obviously there's going to be a few cowboy lenders out there who will just lend money at anything. Yes. And that's where the due diligence comes in again from, say, someone like yourself approaching a company that you want to make sure that you're buying from a legit company, mm-hmm. uh, record, good experience, good help when needed. Um, and like you say, yes, like Crowd Property have that tool where you can propose a project and it, it throws loads of people in that surrounding area. So you can actually see who's in that area, who can you contact that might help. And that's really what that power team is about. Yeah. So you say a project manager. So um, what, what is their, what's their skill specifically? Uh, is that on the construction side or is it, are they like a sort of general? Yeah, it could be anything. It? Yeah, it could be literally anything because they're going to have that expertise, that knowledge. They'll have the contacts already. So it, it will say you pulling together a construction team because they, they'll know the area. Uh, they might have done projects. And this is where you'd search and go, right, I'm investing in Bristol. I want the best Bristol construction team. I want to do HMOs. So I want people that have done HMOs. I don't want someone that specializes in new builds because they might not have a clue about HMOs. That's yeah. the difference. So you find someone to fit your project, your business needs at the end of the day. Yeah. And and they they come in through, you can either obviously pay them a wage or you can get them in on the deal like so, they benefit from from the exit or like a joint venture, yeah, so it, like that. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you could do joint ventures. It all depends on that person, really, and how yeah. you and what they're up to. Because they might be a project manager wanting to go into property themselves, but have no money. Yeah, you just don't know. Um, and this is where your conversation start, and then you gain that relationship. Mm. You find out more about that person. Absolutely. So that that is is very similar to what what I did. Um, so I had a contact, his name was Steve. Um, I knew that he was building a, a decent construction company. They, they sponsored Bristol City, which is the, the team in Bristol, obviously. Um, and I thought, God, they're, they're doing some really good things. And I wanted to get into property. Um, and I, I messaged him, just said, look, what are you doing? I want to get involved. Boom, 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 boom. And he is now the, the project manager for all of our deals. Obviously, he's also a mastermind student, so has good knowledge on everything especially in on the construction side so you know it, again it's, it's it's that networking piece it is that networking piece that is so underrated you know i know everyone says about it but i don't think people are really like dialing down on on that networking piece um mm-hmm. going to the pin events you know just messaging people linkedin instagram just building that up um like i seen a guy there was just down the road from me there was a project going on and i i seen who who it was and and just dm the guy on instagram and said i see you're doing a really cool project when i go for coffee and he was like yeah yeah cool it is as easy as that like yeah you may turn up sweaty and nervous that's Mm. fine like you know we just got to get over it and there's a sale going on a date isn't it for the first time you go on a date you never met this person you've got to sell yourself um yeah You've got to big yourself up in your mind before going in and then yeah. speak to that person. And you may hate it or her at the end of the day and not get on and go, but at least you've made that effort to try and gain that relationship in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. So power team, 
that's absolutely cool what we got there boom 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 i think we if we just dive into the last few things um which are things like things like using none of your own cash we we've kind of tiptoed around things like you guys obviously do let's say 70 percent, so you need the 30 percent, right and if you then raise that from an investor they're going to say well you've got no skin in the game this is this is risk on me and risk on let's say crowd where's where's your risk um and say like you start listening to a lot of people and you you really start to think like wow i'm just gonna do loads of of like none of your own cash deals or no money left in deals and these deals, 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 deals. Realistically, obviously they do happen. They do happen. Um, but I, I, I feel that the stars have to align a lot of the time, you know, all the planets <laughs> have just aligned and it, it all happens at once. Realistically, I, cause I, I don't, I wanted this to be no BS. And from my point of view, you may be, you may differ like doing deals with none of your own cash is is complicated it, it takes more contacts more effort it's always going to help if you've got some of your own cash to put in w- would you agree with that or is there anything that you would say that's not quite true it's, it's a yes and no right it's a difficult like you say it's difficult because the stars definitely the planets have to align um and but they do happen um you probably have the example of um, if you have investors behind you, so you've gained these relationships, now they're, they're your main investors, you can use their money. So it becomes yourself, no money down deal, which is obviously the best case scenario. Yeah. But you always have the, the, the options that these happen very rarely, by the way. So at Crowd Property, we can lend to market value rather than purchase price. So if, say, the market value is 100000 but you're only purchasing the property for seventy, because, I don't know, they did a quick sale, uh, they go through a divorce, so they just want seventy grand sold, okay? We could actually lend to 70% of the 100000 okay? So that would leave a gross amount of 70000 and the purchase price is 70000 Yes. So the likelihood on that, because we're not straight away going to give 100%, okay, is probably retain interest based on that 70 grand lending, just call it 10%, for example. So you're now at a level of around 64 outcomes of fee, legal cost, let's just say it leaves a net amount of 60. If I was giving you 60 grand towards a 70 grand purchase and you didn't have that 10,000 pounds put towards it, it would then start questioning the, the lender, where's the risk, right, you've just talked about previously if you didn't have mm. ten thousand this is your job to get an investor for that ten thousand uh, which would make it a no money down deal yeah 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 so it's very it is very rare because people loads of people come to me and say their market value is 200 grand and they're only purchased for 100 grand likelihood of that happening very 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 low yeah. and us as a lender would never lend more than someone needs for a project yeah 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 that's the thing i don't want people to like be confused like i suppose like say when i was getting into this game i i initially thought that i was i just felt so empowered and i was like i'm gonna just do deals on a daily basis with none of my money um and obviously you quickly learn that that's probably not the case um as said unless you've got a really good infrastructure Mm -hmm. already um in place um so that's cool um and then the uh, the last thing was is was looking at purchase lease options um obviously we don't want to get into the specifics i think we'll go through deals we'll go through what you should look for in certain deals and how we can use these different techniques like in later episodes but again i just want to go with for this and this is just based on me right in terms of when i when i first started i was approaching every vendor and being like purchase lease option uh, you know just do, do you want to do you want to do this um and they're like what the freaking hell are you talking about kid um <laughs> you know uh 31 now so unfortunately not a kid anymore um you know and i was just using it wrong um and i feel like it's just get to get some clarity around 
the purchase lease option and when it should be used um and yeah and, and not using it how i was trying to use it which is with everyone initially what what are your thoughts on on purchase lease options and stuff like that i know you've dealt with them a bit so. yeah so so purchase lease on they're, they're a great strategy they are um but like you say you've got to find that vendor that understands as well or for you to have that time to gain the relationship go back to relationships again and be able to sit down have a coffee have a beer and say right i really like this property they might not need to sell so it's kind of you vetting out the vendor first let's just say um i don't know sadly the vendor's family members died in the house or something like that so it's free. They don't need to sell straight away. They've got no siblings arguing about money, so they don't need to sell quickly. They think, well, you could approach them and say, right, we agree a purchase price at its current state. And just say there was a mortgage on there. You could cover their mortgage costs per month. So they're not having not to worry about it. And at the same time, you're doing this property up. So you're mm-hmm. the value inside. And then at the end of it, it might be 100K rise in value, for example. So you know you've agreed that price. Now, when at that stage you've finished and it's now got its new value, you can come to a lender like Crowd Property and they'll give you 70, 75% of that new added value, not what you agreed the purchase price at. Again, so that's perfect because you've agreed that lower purchase price, you've 100% funded that basically because you've inputted your cash into the cost of work, added the value to it. The problem with purchase lease options is it's finding that vendor to do it in the first place. Um, Because obviously you don't know. If you see something like right move, you don't know the situation behind that. I'd say 99% of all houses on there, they just want quick sales. So they're Mm -hmm. not able to hang around. But you might find a millionaire that's got 10 houses. He's just decided to get rid of one because, I don't know, his wife doesn't like it, for example. Her husband doesn't like it. So they think, let's get rid of it. But then when you suggest the idea to them and say, well, I'll cover the mortgage costs on this. So it's not costing you anything. And it's benefiting them because they've got less worry. They might have lost a job or something like that. So their income's bad. So you're covering and helping them out. And that's what it's about. It's about the developer helping out the vendor. It's not just yeah. greed, nicking their property from them, adding the value and you reaping the award rewards. It's You're working kind of together. Um, yeah. yeah, finding that deal is probably the hardest bit about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the nail on the head there is that you've got to approach it in terms of like they have a problem that you need to solve, whether that's they're selling a portfolio and that's tax reasons or whether that's, yeah, they something's happened in their life and they don't want the the holding costs of the property and they don't need the money straight away, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah, it goes back to uh, it's just having that as a tool, right? A purchase lease option, all of these things are tools, that you can use when the circumstance shows itself. Whereas I was using it as the main strategy because I thought that was going to be my sort of uh, route to portfolio riches. Um, And and it probably is the the route. Uh, I won't go into details because we'll probably cover this or you'll cover this at a later episode. But um, one conception or oh, misconception about it all is that people can borrow money for a bank if doing a purchase lease option the answer is yes they can but at the end of the process when you actually need to purchase the place we, a bank can't lend you money towards the cost of works because you're not the legal owner of that property yeah so you couldn't approach crowd property at the start saying i only need 60k to do this work so i'm adding value we can't lend you that 60k because yeah. we get first charge on that place yeah 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 we'll go in say so we will go into purchase these options down the line that's that's definitely a couple of episodes down the line <laughs> yeah definitely but i i think that that is it in terms of i think we've gone through enough i say this is this one's like an overarching kind of less specific episode um and i've absolutely been killing myself with this mic in between my legs my legs i'm gonna have cramp in a minute <laughs> I, I usually i'm quite i'm handsy aren't i so i like i like to get everything out um but I've, I've now managed to just sit it in between um so it's it's safe and steady but yeah i think overarching i think i think the the key takeaways are network your ass off you know like it, do it do it do it and if you're just not that person, team up with someone who is, if you bring the opposite set of skills to the table. If you're the finance guy and you know, you're know you shy, then find someone who 
is more bubbly the uh, not that that's a prerequisite for networking but you know if we're going on off of stereotypes people that just good chat and you think that that person is a great networker let me team up with them so again it just goes back to networking networking yeah. networking networking I would, I would just like to add, like add to that final bit and uh let's just say i'm very shy and you're very shy and you go to the say the property investors network um, which runs all around the country they do a superb thing where people can stand up and speak for i think it's 15 or 20 seconds about what they do and what they're looking for if you were shy and i didn't want to stand up i think you didn't want to stand up so we just sat there and then we noticed four people stand up and talk about what they do and you're like wow like that's exactly who i need to speak to then do it privately after the network meeting yeah, because I normally congregate around the bar or grabs a coffee, and they just stop to go up to them and have a like a friendly chat. Because then at least you're not speaking in front of a crowd of people, not knowing what you're doing. You don't want people to know you're a newbie, for example. You can just speak to them directly and say, "Would you mind pushing me in the right direction? Um, here's a coffee. Here's a beer, and there you go. You're away." Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That is definitely a great way to do it. So I think I think that concludes episode one. I'm not sure what episode two is going to be, but we, <laughs> we will figure it out. And obviously, we'll have more guests. Obviously, we've we've peaked at this point now. You know, definitely, we've, definitely. We've, we've got we've got the main man so it's only downhill from here um but yeah it's been it's been amazing speaking to you and i, th- I want to thank you obviously you've, like for your support through everything so far and if if anyone listening has got a deal or wants any information th- this this is your man to go to crowd property and tom get in touch they you do clubhouses all the time don't you in the morning maybe join clubhouse get on there ask some questions or where where, where yeah. else can they find you? Where where do where do you like to be contacted? Is it LinkedIn oh, email? Yeah, so you've got LinkedIn email. Um, I'll give you the details that you can put on here if you'd like to. Um, yeah. yeah, Clubhouse every Tuesday and Thursday at eight o'clock in the morning. It's quite early. Um, yeah, but yeah, just or the Crowd Property website. That's our, our numbers are all over there. Give us a call and happy to help. As you know, like people WhatsApp me all the time. Got a new deal? What would you do? Perfect. Yeah, I heard your phone going off. A lot. Oh, it's, also, yeah, it's gone up also, about 20 times. <laughs> you also, I think you've got some construction works going on as well. I get a doo, 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 man, Yeah, so. I've got literally everything around this place. <laughs> Cracking. Tom, lovely stuff. Thank I'll you very much, Alec. Thank Sweet. you very much. Take care. Take care.